على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فلما ذهبوا به وأجمعوا أن يجعلوه في غيابة الجب وأوحينا إليه لتنبئنهم بأمرهم هذا وهم لا يشعرون وجاءوا أباهم عشاء يبكون قالوا يا أبانا إنا ذهبنا نستبق وتركنا يوسف عند متاعنا فأكله الذئب وما أنت بمؤمن لنا ولو كنا صادقين وجاءوا على قميصه بدم كذب قال بل سولت لكم أنفسكم أمرا فصبر جميل والله المستعان على ما تصفون صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين <coughs> سورة يوسف The story of Sayyidina Yusuf على نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام We'll continue with it tonight inshallah So far we have read that Sayyidina Yusuf, his brothers, who are not his real brothers, but ten of them were stepbrothers. They took permission from their father, Sayyidina Yaqub ala Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, to take Yusuf ala Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam to, the, uh, to them for playing and eating. <coughs> and Sayyidina Yaqub, with hesitation, allowed him, allowed them to take Sayyidina Yusuf with them. فلما ذهبوا به when they went away with him so this going away was very special as well to show to their father that they really cared about Hazrat Yusuf they carried him on his on their shoulders one by one and Sayyidina Yaqub had also come out a little way with them to see him off and as was already mentioned, it was very hard for Sayyidina Yaqub to let Sayyidina Yusuf out of his eyesight, out of his sight even for a short while. But these brothers had promised that we will take care of him and they, to show it that we really care about him, they carried him on their shoulders. But as soon as they got out of the sight of their father, they put him, they threw him to the ground and said that walk yourself. And he was a little child and he begged them to help him and he cannot walk it is hard for him to walk but they none of them he asked for help from one after another each one of them but none of them helped rather they all said that ask the help from those uh, 11 stars or that were 10 stars that were doing sajda to you so finally he reminded his oldest brother Yehuda about the pledge that he had made with Sayyidina Yaqub to take care of him and the love that his father had and the old age of his father. So Yehuda, although he was not a Nabi, but he had a tender heart. He listened to Sayyidina Yusuf والسلام, and carried him on his shoulders and said that as long as I am living, nobody will be able to harm you. And then he addressed his other brothers and said that to kill an innocent is a grave sin and you do not. I, I, I'm not going to let you commit that sin. I'm not going to let you kill Yusuf or harm Yusuf. Let's go back and <clears throat> take him back to our father but just ask him for a promise that he will give us equal attention but all the other brothers they said that this is your scheme they said to Yehuda the oldest brother that this is also your scheme you want to gain even more respect for yourself in the eyes of our father and if you do that we are going to also kill you so he could not do anything and they he said that okay let's not kill him but put him in a pit, I know a pit, a, a, a pit of a well, which is abandoned, nobody goes there, and it is full of harmful insects. We can put him there, and then he will be driven away from you. So he will not come back to your, your, our father, and we will be, you will do away with him. <coughs> so this is their going. They went away with him and they determined they were determined to put him in the bottom of a pit so change, they changed their plan of killing Sayyidina Yusuf but they agreed to put him in the pit of a well 
وأوحينا إليه الله سبحانه وتعالى تول سيدنا يوسف على نبينا عليه الصلاة والسلام لتنبئنهم بأمرهم هذا that there is going to be a day there is going to come a time that you will one day remind them of this deed وهم لا يشعرون and they will not recognize you so Allah سبحانه وتعالى consoled Sayyidina Yusuf gave him confidence that what they are doing there will come a day where you will reprimand them for what they are doing you will be in, in power and authority and you will be able to ask them and you will be repeat this to them tell them that this is what you did ask them what you did and they will not recognize they will not even recognize you at that time so they put Sayyidina Yusuf in that pit and the way they put him in the pit, the detail has been mentioned by Imam Qurtubi and Imam Mujahid Rahmatullahi Alayhi that they, the basket, the bucket that is used to draw water from the uh, pail, they tied his hands and put him in that bucket and lowered that bucket halfway through the well but before it could reach the bottom of the pit, they cut the rope so that he has a free fall and he dies. But it was the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it was the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all along that that well did have some water in it. And he did not hit the hard surface, but the bucket hit the hard surface. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Sayyidina Jibreel and Nabi Nasrallah to lift Sayyidina Yusuf out of that bucket and set him peacefully on a rock that was protruding from the wall of that well. There, Hazrat Yusuf and Nabi Nasrallah stayed for three days. And Yehuda, his older brother, every day he would come and lower the food for him and uh, drinks for him. So that's how. Hazrat Yusuf salam, survived in the well for three days. Waja'u abahu isha an yabkun. And these brothers, at the time of nightfall, they came back, they returned to their father crying. So as they came back, Yaqub came out and said that what happened? Did somebody attack you? Did somebody attack your goats that you took with, them, with you? They said, Qalu ya abana. They said, O oh, our father, inna zahabna nastabiqu. No. They said that father we went racing with another. We were, you know, competing with each other in running. Watarakna Yusufa in the Mataina and we had left Yusuf with our stuff. And a wolf ate him up. And you will never believe us. We know that you will not believe us. Walau kunna sadiqin no matter how truthful we are. And we already know that you are not going to believe us because you already know that we are. You already think that we are liars. So you are not going to believe us but that is the tr truth. Although if you are telling the truth, you will not believe us. وَجَاءُوا عَلَىٰ قَمِيسِهِ And they came to Yaqub عَلَىٰ قَمِيسِهِ With the shirt, with the top covering, the kurta of Hazrat Yusuf. بِدَّمٍ <coughs> كَذِبْ They came with fake blood on his shirt. So what they did was that they had slaughtered a baby goat and stained the shirt with that blood and said that this is the blood of Yusuf Had Yusuf alayhi salam Had Yaqub was the Nabi of his time As soon as he saw that it is written in Tafasi that he said that what a wise wolf it was that it ate the child but did not tear apart or damage the shirt at all The shirt is whole, it is not even scratched but there is blood on it and the wolf ate the child inside but did not do any, did not create any tears on the covering of the clothing. قَالَ بَلْ سَوَّلَتْ لَكُمْ أَنفُسُكُمْ أَمْرَا He said, rather your inner desires have tempted you to do something. So the Yaqub at that time clarified to them that you have done something wrong. Your inner desire, your nafs has made you do something wrong. فَصَبْرٌ جَمِيلٌ And patience is best. وَاللَّهُ الْمُسْتَعَانُ عَلَى مَا تَصِفُونَ it is Allah whose help is sought after what you describe. So imagine the old father, his beloved, most beloved son has, is gone, has disappeared and these brothers have come, ten of them, with fake blood and he knows that they have done something sinister, something evil and still he is such a Nabi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's saying that he's not even reprimanding them, only telling them that I know you have done something wrong, you have done something evil but I am going to be patient, I am going to do sabr over this and I'm going to seek Allah's help against what you are describing to me. We'll continue reading the story tomorrow, inshallah, to what happened to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi wa salatu wasalam. There's some ma'arif, some points of understanding from these ayat, some masail that ulama have written. <coughs> One is that they take, took 
حضرت یوسف علیہ نبی علیہ السلات والسلام فور پلیجر فور این ایکسکرجن فار اے ٹرپ اینڈ سچ از پروو فرام دا پروس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ایز ویل دیٹ دا پروس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ووڈ آلسو سم ٹائمز ٹو ریلیکس گو ٹو اے گارڈن اف آئی ریمبر دا صاحب سنگر سعد ابی وقاص علی اللہ ان مدینہ ٹوڈے اسٹل دیٹ گارڈن از دیئر دیس سم ادر گارڈنس دیٹ آر آلسو سیٹ ٹو بی ہیو بلانگ ٹو دا پروس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دا پروس صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم از نون ٹو ہیو وزٹڈ دیم فار ریلیکسیشن سو دیٹ ریلیکسیشن ان آر لائف ٹیکنگ ٹائم آف اسپینڈنگ ٹو ریلیکس آر سیلف دیٹ از permissible that is not a waste of time and that is praiseworthy in certain circumstances similarly it is proven from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the sahaba to race each other to compete compete with each other in sports but that was very different from our time the sahaba are known to have competed with each other in racing the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has is known to have competed but there was no betting or no uh, money involved in it If a third party wishes to reward the winner, that is permissible, but betting is not permissible. Similarly, of horses or other animals, racing, running, competitions, those are allowed, permissible in Islam. Even giving prizes is also permissible, but betting, which that if certain or the loser gives the money to the winner, that is not permissible. And the ulama have written that pretty much all the Uh, ways that racing is conducted, racing competitions are conducted these days. There is a lot of betting and everything. It is impermissible. Inshallah, we'll continue reading tomorrow. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ganta samir alim wa tu'ala inna inna ganta tawab al-rahim wa sallallahu ta'ala ala khayri khalqih Sayyidina wa lana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi al-ma'in. Amin.